In this video, I'm going to go through how to use the variable modules within make.com. They're very useful tools for cleaning up your scenarios, being able to handle routing or complex logic. You can also use variables as a way to upsert records. For example, searching if a Google Sheet row exists and if it does not, add the row before you update it. I'll also show you how we use variables in our more advanced scenarios. And I'll explain one particular quirk with variables that you really need to know about when creating these because you could get caught out by them. Make has a very specific implementation for how they use variables. So let's get started with this simple example. In this case, we just have a simple sheet. Now this is a very basic contrived example, but we have a simple sheet in Google Sheets. So we're going to add in a prompt here and then this make.com scenario is going to pick up new roles. It's going to go to Anthropic Cloud. You could use any other LLM for this, such as OpenAI or Gemini or DeepSeek. And then it's going to take the response from that and then add in the response back into this Google Sheet. So why are we using a variable here? It's just an example of, if we go into this cloud module, we can select this cloud module here from the drop-down list, or we can map it from a variable. I'll run this scenario without using the variable, and afterwards I'll add the variable in. So I'm gonna select cloud 3.5 haiku, press save. Now I'm going to just press save and then run this scenario once. So this has gone to cloud, it's taken the prompt and then dumped the response back into the Google Sheet. So here's our response. Pretty basic, but it works. Now let's try that again, except we're gonna use a variable this time. So I've just copied in the prompt to the next row down and I'm gonna add in a new set variable module here. So just type set variable, set fair. And for the variable name, I'm just gonna call it Claude model name and press save. And then over here, I'm gonna select the map button. I'm gonna get the model name from that. Then I'm gonna copy that into the variable name. And then I now want to go press map and select that model name as a variable. So that's how we map variable values to individual fields on other modules within make.com. So I'll press save, press save again. And now we'll run this again. Now it's gonna take that variable name and then pass that to Claude, and that's done the exact same thing as a previous one, but we use a variable in the equation. And why is that useful? If we have lots of Claude modules, for example, or lots of calls to LLMs, like in this case, we're using open router, you could add this set variable at the start, such as Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and reference that module in every other LLM that we use for the rest of the scenario. That means that later on when you want to update the model name, if a new Claude model comes out, you just update it here instead of having to update it in every other single module in the scenario. In this case, we used a set multiple variables module, but this works in the exact same way as single variables and you're only using it in one operation. So we could technically do the exact same thing here. You go add a module, tools, set multiple variables, you add in the variable name here. So let's just do that just to show you how that works. So Claude model name, Claude 3.5 haiku, and let's just add in another variable, random variable name here. Now I press delete. Now you'll see that we are now missing the mapping from Claude and this mapping has updated. So we see the Claude model name and we have this second variable name that we set. So now select Claude model name and now that will work the next time we run the scenario. Now I'm going to drag the starting point down to this next part of the scenario, this next example I'm going to go through, which is where we're using a router as a form of a converger. What that means is that we have a second sheet and we want to be able to generate an image optionally within this. Let's take this example. We have a post topic. We're going to allow the user within this spreadsheet to be able to choose if they want to generate an image or not. So in this case, we're going to say yes. And the image prompt is Gardner. Now this Google Sheets is watching for a new row and we're setting multiple variables here, similar to how we did previously. We have the model name here and we're setting this file API key. So what we're doing is we're gonna call Claude the exact same way as we did previously. And then we're adding a router. And if image generate equals yes. So if this generate image field here is equal to yes, so that's if this is equal to yes, we want to go along and call file.ai, which is a AI image service to call flux one Chanel to generate the image. Now we've passed in the authorization key in here and the request content for that should be the generate image. So the request content here is in JSON and we're gonna generate the image based on that prompt. So we're just passing in the Google Sheets prompt, which was this here. 
Now we'll press save. Then after that, we're gonna pass in the URL. So when we send a request to file.ai to generate an image, it's gonna respond with a URL. And the URL will be something like this here. The URL is gonna go into this variable, press save. Now we've set this up. If you right click on the router, you can order the routes. So the first route here is going to run first. And then after that, the second route will be run. That's very important because we want this route to run first on the basis that if generate image is equal to yes, then it's gonna generate that image and set the variable. Then within the second route, when it is run, it's gonna get the exact same variable name. And we're using this get variable module. So again, for the set variable name, we're adding in the image URL here. And then down here, we're adding in the image URL and you wanna get the exact same variable name. It's very important that they're the same. And then within this Google Sheets row, we're then simply passing in that particular variable. So it should be the image URL that we got from file.ai. So let's test that out so you can see exactly how that works in practice. I'm gonna press save. And now we've added in this next row here. So once I select run once, it should continue processing from there. Okay, now it's going to Claude. It's generated the image. And now we see that the variable name for image URL is this particular file.ai URL. So we we'll just go into that now. It generated that, which is not honestly not the best image. We're using a cheaper file.ai flux model. It's Chanel in this case, just because it's cheaper, just for the sake of explanation. Now in this case, it's come back and we've got that variable within this next route. So this is acted as effectively a converger of that data from that route into this one. And now it has updated the sheet. So let's see here, we have, we're gonna zoom out of it there. And within there, we have the response and the image URL. And if we add anything other than yes within this, it's not gonna generate the image. So let's just test that out. I'm gonna copy this exact one in here. Gonna write no for that. I'm going to run this scenario again, so I'll run. And let's see, it should not have hit. So perfect, it has not hit this route. It's got nothing for that, so it's empty. So you see, when a variable is not present here, it's just gonna respond with empty rather than erroring out. That's important to know. And we see within this bundle here, if you click on the magnifying glass, this stop sign means that it did not pass through that filter. And at the very end, it passed in nothing to this particular image URL. Field. So we just got the response and nothing else there. So that's worked exactly as we wanted. This converger pattern, you can take this a lot further. This is a bit more advanced, so I'm not gonna go through it in this exact video, but a link to a video on the channel where Daniel has published previously, which is this converger pattern idea. And this is upserting a record. So we're checking in Google Sheets to see if a row exists. And if it does not exist, then it's gonna add the row and it's gonna add the row there, set the correct variable. And then after that, it's gonna go all back into this flow and it will work seamlessly. So if the row exists, it's gonna update it. If the row does not exist, it adds the row and then it updates it. So that's where these variables are very useful for this kind of converger pattern. Now I want to go through an important concept that you need to know about for variables within make.com. I'm going to explain what I'm doing in this scenario here. And then after that, you'll know why it's a problem. And then I'll show you the alternative working version of it. Okay, let's just press play and we're running the scenario. So what are we doing here? At the start, we're setting a variable. We're adding this test variable here and the variable value is one, two, three. Then after that, we're passing in some JSON. It's a basic, basic JSON list that I generated from ChatGPT. If you go into the JSON list, you see it's just simply three different records. ID one, ID two, ID three, name and age. It does not really matter what this is. I just added in this JSON because I wanted to add in an iterator to really hit this point home. Now in this iterator, it's gonna iterate through every single one of those bundles. And then within that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the variable value. I've added in set variable. We've referenced the original variable name out here from the very start. And what we wanna do is we wanna take the variable and just add in the name of the current iteration. So the name, what we're expecting should be something like one, two, three, Alice. The next time it should be one, two, three, Alice, Bob. Then after that, it should be one, two, three, Alice, Bob, Charlie. Then at the very end, we're just gonna get the variable name and then that should be what we want. However, what happens is it runs through the iteration. On the first run of this, it gets this value. Then it adds Alice to that. On the second iteration, it gets the original variable. And then 
it adds the second iterator value to that. So it keeps overriding that value. So that's a problem. And that shows a very important concept that we need to know about variables within make.com. It's that they're module dependent, and that's a super important concept. So if you want to get the current variable value, you need to make sure to get that value before setting it again. A working version of this concept is this version of the scenario. So we get the variable value again within this module before trying to set and update it. So I'll press run once here and you'll see the values of that. Now it's doing the exact same thing at the start. It's going through the iterator. So we have the same values. Within this, we're gonna get the variable value again. So we're just providing in this test variable name. Then within this tools, we're now referencing this module as opposed to referencing the original module. So we're setting that variable and then we're updating it with the current name from that item in the iterator. And then at the end, it's gonna aggregate all those together. The first time round, the value is one, two, three, Alice. The second time round, the var variable value is one, two, three, Alice, Bob. The third time, one, two, three, Alice, Bob, Charlie. And that is only because we're getting the variable after it's been set. So in the execution order here, it goes through the iterator, it gets the variable. The first time around when it gets the variable, that's the one we originally set here. It's test variable is the name. The next time around it sets the variable and it adds this name to this iteration. And then it goes back to the next iterator cycle of this. It gets the variable, but the last time this variable has been set, it was set there and not set there. So it then gets this version of it. And then the next time we're setting that variable, it's gonna get the value from this module. The last time this was run, it got the most recent version of the variable. So that means this will be up to date. And then at the end, we aggregate those together. It's not really necessary for this example. We get the variable value. And then we see one, two, three, Alice, Bob, Charlie. So that's a just kind of an important quirk that you need to know when using variables within make.com because as you see here, we're using, in this blogging system, we're using variables and an iterator and kind of more complex routing in order to, to add images and YouTube videos to our articles. And when we do that, we really need to make sure that our running lists of variables are properly up to date. So you need to make sure you're getting and setting your variables correctly, and you don't run into those kind of counterintuitive errors that you might expect. Because you could expect that make.com kind of has a global state on their variables, which they don't. They're very much module dependent, as I showed you there. I hope that video was useful. If you have any questions or other uses for variables within make.com, then drop a comment below. If you want to get way ahead in your AI automation journey, then check out the link in the description to our community. We'll get access to all of our automation templates. You'll get instant access to all of these courses with more on the way. You can get support from us via our live workshops and through our active discussion boards.